I'm Mark Fletcher, Chief Architect of Worldwide Public Safety Solutions for Avaya, and this is Global Enterprise Location, addressing the problem of location reporting from callers within corporate networks. The problem today is that emergency call routing is based on a few basic principles. The first is that the telephone number being presented to the network for routing assumes that each address has a unique telephone number, therefore making the phone number the database key for the emergency call routing entity in the network. This database is responsible for managing the proper mapping of telephone number to the proper agency for call delivery. Once the call is delivered to the PSAP or control room, computer-aided dispatch software either queries the telecom provider and the caller location database or uses the location data that has been pushed to it over a separate data channel that's delivered to the call taker that has the call. Typically, the only information that's displayed is the registered name based on billing and the registered address based on the telecom provider service records. Prior to the mass deployment of cellular devices and mobility, this process worked quite well, for the most part, as each number was directly related to an address. While this is typically sufficient for residential citizens, individuals within a corporate enterprise network have additional challenges due to the large campuses with multiple buildings. These buildings may have no or unclear street addresses, as they reside on private property. And secure buildings may have access control requirements or multiple floors serviced by various entrances. Because of this, enterprise users are not typically afforded the same level of location granularity, and while technology is available, it's often too confusing or expensive to deploy. Because of this, enterprise public safety issues are often pushed to the side or forgotten about until a tragedy happens. When deploying a commercial enterprise class system, the very first decision that you must make is what level of granularity of detail is the system going to provide both internally and to public safety control rooms. Now, since many of us are accustomed to the residential model, the initial inclination is to build a public automatic location identification record for each individual. Unfortunately, this becomes difficult to manage as the database can become quite large. Due to user mobility around the campus and the lack of real-time access to that database, moves, adds, and changes can be difficult and complex to manage, if not impossible often requiring expensive middleware to collect the move data and then batch process those changes in the evening. This creates an obvious delay in addition to incurring a monthly cost per record. Since there's historically no real-time access to this database, changes are not immediately populated, which is when they're most likely would be needed since the user would be new to their surroundings and may not be able to describe their location. As you can see, 50 phones across 10 floors in three different buildings quickly scales out of control. Even services that manage location data for just a few dollars a month per station can get very expensive very quickly. Imagine 10 floors in each building, three buildings in a campus. That works out to 1,500 telephone numbers that need to be individually managed monthly. And even while a seemingly minimal cost of $2 per month per record, that's $3,000 in operational overhead every single month. And we haven't even started with the solution yet. By segmenting each building into a zone-based approach, we can provide an appropriate response address for each individual building and provide first responders with floor-level details. In addition to this information being passed to public safety, Local internal first responders can get explicit detail about the exact location of the station that placed the emergency call. This enables an immediate on-site response and allows first responders to meet public safety at an appropriate building entrance, ensuring quick and unobstructed passageway to the employee in need of assistance. So operationally, we have the same level of detail However, financially, we've reduced the requirement for 1,500 alley records at $3,000 a month to 30 records at $60 a month. That works out to be an annual cost savings of just over $33,000. Public safety first responders need a dispatchable address. They can't get the fire truck, police car, or ambulance any closer than the front door. 
at the time of the call, providing them detailed information, such as Cube 2C231, is simply not relevant while they're en route to the location. It is, however, very critical to internal first responders that can provide that level of detail immediately once public safety arrives on scene. When we look at enterprise PBX systems, there are three basic requirements that can be utilized for emergency calls within the enterprise network. The industry's message needs to be clear on these three simple and vendor agnostic points. When emergencies happen, normally panic strikes, and even the most seasoned employee can become confused. Quite often, since we don't dial access codes on our cell phones or in our homes, we find that many people will forget to dial the access code when calling emergency services from a PBX or MLTS telephone. Fortunately, this is a simple programming or dial plan change in the system that will allow emergency numbers and short codes to be dialed both with and without the access code. When provisioning systems, system administrators need to take special care to also program the system to prevent a high number of additional misdials that can occur by accident. Understanding that an emergency call has taken place is also critical for internal first responders. When an employee dials an emergency number, the system should provide alerting to designated stations that an emergency call has occurred. This allows internal staff to establish and follow specific procedures for assisting with the emergency, or at least be ready to receive public safety when they arrive at the building. The third basic system requirement is one that's more policy. The interception or termination of emergency calls internally should be discouraged and prohibited unless trained staff have been assigned to this function. Public safety call takers and dispatchers have received specialized training for handling emergency calls. And by answering or intercepting the call locally, MLTS users are delaying what could be life-saving assistance. What's perceived as the biggest challenge in enterprises? Location discovery. Understanding where the emergency is occurring is the key piece of information that's required to provide assistance. And while sometimes difficult, the problem can be tackled with cooperation from the network staff. Voice over IP devices on the network are entities that can be discovered using a variety of common protocols. However, coordination and cooperation with the IT staff is critical. Specific areas within a building that can be serviced by an IP subnet or a range of IP addresses can provide a simple way where location comparison can easily be made. Think of it this way. You already know that I live on Main Street. When I call for help, you just need to know the house number. In the same manner, a device will report that it's at 72.148.150.97. And you know the 72.148.150 subnet refers specifically to the 15th floor of the building. Based on this, you have the general idea of where the emergency is. Of course, this assumes that the space is reasonably searchable and that help can be immediately dispatched. Prior to virtual local area networks, or VLANs, network segmentation was not always possible or easy. But with the latest series of data switching equipment, VLAN is a simple and common administrative task. If more granular location information is required than the subnet will provide, again, common network protocols will allow the network administrator or an application to scan the data switches on the network, retrieving what is known as the bridge MIB through standard SNMP queries. This bridge MIB is basically a listing of MAC addresses that are attached to specific data switch ports. And while this does provide very specific location information, it's only valid when it's coupled with what is commonly referred to as a wire map database. This wire map correlates what specific jacks are wired to the specific switch ports. Now, users that deploy this strategy absolutely must maintain accurate cable records and control moves, adds, and changes diligently on the network. Now, while this level of information certainly adds relevant data to the question of location, it by itself is typically not enough to provide discrete information to specifically locate an individual. Fortunately, corporate enterprise networks contain additional data resources that can be utilized and queried. Information from LDAP and Active Directory can provide details on individuals and their locations. 
The user themselves may even contribute additional personal or medical information that they've opted in for. Relevant data points from the wireless LAN infrastructure or the MLTS PBX itself can provide further visibility into the device that was used to place the emergency call. All of this valuable information correlated with cable management records can be utilized to fine-tune the location. And this additional information can be critical in determining real calls from hoax calls. And finally, critical environmental information from smart buildings or HVAC systems can provide important clues such as ambient temperature or smoke conditions that exist in the origination area of the emergency call. So when looking at an emergency call hang-up, this additional information can be critical in determining real calls from hoax calls. This model also neatly packages this information for retrieval or transmission to public safety entities once a next-generation emergency services network infrastructure is put into place or delivering it over the top on the legacy network. Enhanced on-site notification with additional data and the correlation of that information is the key to affordable emergency response and the elimination of the public Annie Alley databases. Enterprise screen pop alert clients can be anywhere on the network. Information such as detailed floor plans and even video can be provided. Simple integration with smart building data can provide mobile apps, web-based displays, or even reader boards with valuable information. And by empowering the enterprise with information about the incident, they can contribute additional data, simplifying the call for help. What is a hang-up call now becomes a hang-up call with high temperature readings in the area as additional data in the future, providing local on-site responders with critical information as well as public safety. Having this information available in the enterprise network allows us to provide that information to public safety. In the future, we'll be able to embed a URI or URL and send that information in the SIP header. Public safety can then reach back into the enterprise network, either directly or through a next-generation emergency services data aggregator, such as Smart911. And today, we can embed that URL in the existing ANI record for the location. With any emergency services solution, we need to consider remote and home-based devices. Remember, almost any device can be nomadic. TDM phones can use virtual office and relocate themselves to remote locations. Voice over IP devices allow users to move without notice. Wireless LAN phones have inherent mobility that's built into the device. And remote workers are nomadic VPN off-premises users, often on networks that we cannot see. While the enterprise MLTS PBX can provide tracking, on-site notification, proper call routing, and caller ID manipulation, Remote users will most likely require a voice over IP positioning carrier, or VPC, to route their call to an appropriate PSAP and deliver the location information that's been collected, either from the network or remote user dashboards. While challenges do exist, enterprise networks can provide valuable and relevant information to public safety control rooms and PSAPs that can significantly increase both location accuracy and the on-site situational awareness of emergency calls from within enterprise networks. The most significant challenges are public awareness and published best practices and legislation requiring commercial entities to implement a solution. Thanks for joining us on this webinar for Enterprise Location, addressing the problem of location reporting from callers within corporate networks. I'm Mark Fletcher, Chief Architect Worldwide Public Safety Solutions. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Fletch911. Thanks for watching.